chunks of ice the size of DVDs. It sounds apocryphal, but it happened in Canada last week. We'll break down what the deal was with this record-breaking hailstone. Hi, gang. I'm my radar meteorologist, Matt Capucci. We've got a new national record to tell you about, but not in the United States. We're talking our neighbor to the north. This hailstone fell in Markerville, a small town in Alberta, Canada, last week on August 1st. That's about 110-ish miles north of Calgary, about 20 miles southwest of Red Deer. It's a tiny community with 18 houses. About 40 people live there. Here's what the downtown looks like. Nice and quaint. It doesn't look like a place where you'd expect tornadoes and giant hail, but it's actually prime real estate. Environment Canada is the Canadian equivalent of the U.S. National Weather Service. However, tornado and severe weather forecasting up there is the equivalent of where the U.S. was back in the 1980s, given staffing, radar technology, observation networks, etc. When the agency issues a tornado or severe thunderstorm warning, it might cover an area the size equivalent of several U.S. states. Here in the United States, we do a small county-level warning or a polygon within a county. Environment Canada does issue convective thunderstorm outlooks in advance, however, similar in nature to what the U.S. Storm Prediction Center does. Here was their call on August 1st. You can see they mentioned funnel clouds, tornadoes, etc. in that orange area. A tornado warning was issued with another cell to the north during the mid-afternoon. Then at 5.28 p.m., Markersville was included in a new tornado warning as a supercell or a rotating thunderstorm approached. A number of storm chasers lost windshields in the giant hail, and CBC Canada reports 34 vehicles were significantly damaged. The largest hailstone discovered was 292.71 grams, or 0.64 pounds. That's the weight of about two and a quarter sticks of butter. But imagine that frozen and falling from the sky at 110 miles per hour. They'd probably kill you. As for the stone's diameter, it was 123 millimeters, or 4.84 inches. That's about the diameter of a DVD. Kind of scares me that my generation probably doesn't even remember DVDs. Notice the spikes on it, though. That's due to something called wet growth. You'll notice the ice is clearer, too, rather than cloudy. That means liquid water accreted on the edge of the growing hailstone, and smaller stones then bumped into it. That liquid water acted as glue until it all kind of froze together into a spiky lump. That process kept repeating. Dry growth, on the other hand, makes rounder, cloudier hail. It occurs when supercooled water droplets just freeze instantly onto the hailstone. So how does this new Canadian record compare to records elsewhere? Well, it's about 20% wider than the previous record stone in Alberta, which fell during the Edmonton tornado on July 31st, 1987. Edmontonians still call it Black Friday, since it killed 27 people. It was an F4 tornado in one of Canada's darkest days. Now, this particular stone that just fell was also about 10% heavier mass-wise. But nothing really compares to what we get here when the United States really overachieves with hail. Our record hailstone fell on Vivian, South Dakota on July 23rd, 2010. It was, get this, eight inches across, the size of a bowling ball. It also weighed 1.94 pounds, so just under two pounds. That's almost eight sticks of butter. Something like that wouldn't just kill you, it'd burrow a crater into the ground. And as a matter of fact, they actually did. Look at all these divots on the lawn of the people who saw these stones. Unsurprisingly, they even managed to barrel through roofs and smash wooden decks. It's been estimated that the updraft of the parent thunderstorm needed to be in the 160 to 180 mile per hour range straight up to support a hailstone of this mammoth size. On radar, you can just barely see a little donut hole west of Vivian. We call that the BWER, or the Bounded Weak Echo Region. That's because the updraft is so locally powerful, it creates a void on radar where precipitation isn't really able to fall because it's being suspended aloft. That just means there's a ton of upward moving air to hold that hail and the rain way high in the sky and that hail can grow to giant proportions. Now we've heard of softball size hail or grapefruits, but in the United States, we've been forced to create a new category for lugging extremely large hail. The technical term is gargantuan, and it refers to any hailstone with a diameter of more than six inches across. Gargantuan hail is rare, but it does happen, maybe one or two times a year. It fell in Taylor, Nebraska this year on May 29th. I was actually chasing that storm, but avoided the hail core because I figured it'd be large, but I didn't expect the hail to be that giant though. I was actually on another gargantuan when hailstorm near Birkin at Texas in May of 2020, but again, I avoided the hail core because I kind of like my truck. And this is what that storm looked like. You can see just how mean it was, appearing as a mothership rotating supercell. You know, curiously, during both storms, I couldn't help but notice the sky had acquired a really peculiar bluish hue that I haven't seen with other storms. 
I genuinely believe that the color of the sky could offer some insight about what hydrometeors or precipitation particles are present, or perhaps their size, abundance, who knows. But personally, I'm not aware of any peer-reviewed research to suggest that loose hypothesis. Let's also talk about international gargantuan hail because it does occur outside the United States. On February 8, 2018, a giant hailstone fell in the Carlos Paz neighborhood of Cordoba, Argentina. I was actually the one who broke that story for the Washington Post initially, and I spoke with the woman who recovered these stones. Her name was Victoria Druetta. However, this stone was closer to 7.1 inches and 0.93 pounds. So again, very spiky, very big, and also pretty heavy. There was a video taken though that circulated showing an enormous stone crashing off the metal rooftop and hitting the pavement, and surprisingly, multiple people got videos of the same hailstone from different angles, which frankly is just incredible. Professor Matt Kumjian of Penn State estimated the stone at between 7.4 and 9.3 inches in diameter. He wasn't there, but he did so using a process called photogrammetry, or using information about camera placement and angle to estimate the size, shape, and speed of moving objects. All told, his team concluded there's a 95% chance that the stone was between 7.5 and 9.4 inches in diameter, so most likely beating out the Vivian South Dakota hailstorm as the widest in the world. That said, it was spikier, and the Vivian stone was rounder, so the Vivian stone had way more mass. I also want to briefly mention a freak event in Tripoli, Libya back in October of 2020. What makes this episode so bizarre is that Tripoli is borderline a desert. In other words, they average less than 11 inches of precipitation per year. And yet somehow, a supercell, or a rotating thunderstorm, formed along a sea breeze boundary amid an explosive meteorological environment. Truly weird. Fortunately, we got no gargantuan hail in the forecast, but once in a while it does happen, and hopefully, I'll be there. Keep it new to my radar on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and I almost forgot my little clicker flick. I guess it is kind of cringy, but who knows? Anyway, tune in next week. We'll see ya. Follow my radar on social media. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.